All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP Omen. No, no, not this. That's just the charging block. This is a 330 watt charging block for a laptop. Can you believe that? I've never seen a charging block this big for a laptop. Anyways, here's the actual laptop here, okay? And this is an HP Omen, let's see, model number. Uh, Omen HP laptop 17T-CK000, all right? I don't know if it has a special name on top of that, but that's an HP Omen, all right? 165 hertz refresh rate and 017, what is that? Designed and engineered by HP. All right, anyways, let's go ahead and take a look. Um, obviously, I've never worked on one of these before. Uh, the screen isn't coming on at all. I think the customer said that an external screen works on it, but the actual screen built in doesn't work. We're going to be using a JS0 or J0 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we got four down here and four up here. I don't know if there's any hidden screws. Uh, as of now, I don't see any. So... Yeah, it looks like four down here and four at the back. All right, so we'll get all those screws out. And then we are going to, I don't know if these aren't hidden screws, are they? There's some little plastic things here, but they don't seem like screws because the case kind of flexes so much around them. So most likely those aren't screws, but uh, we'll find out. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get all these screws out. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my content with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And yeah, um, if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't help out that way, um, sorry, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you can watch a few of my other videos. And then like and comment on those as well because that's what the YouTube algorithm likes to see. Anyways, we're going to try and pop this bomb cover off. I'm getting my fingernails in here. And let's see if I can push on the palm rest area to pop it or if it's going to take something else. But let's see. All right. So that doesn't seem to really pop it. It might have moved a little. Let's try with a suction cup here. So you're going to try pulling this up with a suction cup and nothing is happening. So... This cover is probably going to be a pain to remove, but uh, let's see. All right, can we get this up? There's only a few screws in here, so I'm not sure what is holding this thing down so strong. Let's see, can I get my fingernail in this gap and pull it? No, it doesn't want to budge at all. Nothing's happening here. Wow, this one, I don't know if there's hidden screws. That's going to be an issue. All right. Continue. Let's try and pop it this way again. All right, so push on this. Oh, there we go. That works. Okay, don't push on the touchpad. We're just going to push on here. I just needed a better angle of it, but I was trying to keep it in view a little bit better, but I guess there we go. Okay, so now we got a gap here that formed. I'm going to get my fingernails in there, push down with my thumbnail, and pull up with my other fingers. And we're going to pull up and I'm going to just run my fingernail along here and see if we can pop the cover off. It looks like it's holding strong there. So I guess let's go ahead and work our way over to this side and check. All right, looks like all the clips there are pulled. So let's go ahead and pull up on this and push down here and see if we can get it to pop at all anymore. doesn't look like it wants to budge. It looks like there's some clips, strong clips here. So let's see, I'm going to pull up from closer to the center here and try and pull this down and inwards. Okay, sometimes that will help clips disengage. Oh, I guess not. I guess we just gotta kinda pull harder. Ow, that's like pinching my skin. All right, so we're just gonna pull harder here, I guess. And that does seem to be popping them up. And there we go, okay. So we just needed more force. As you can see, there are no screws there. Okay, and it looks like there's another screw hidden there. So let's rotate this and same thing. We're just gonna pull up from in here and I'm pull, pushing down with my thumb and pulling up with my fingers. Then we're gonna get in here and same thing, just keep pulling. Just more force is needed, it seems. Hmm. These 
clips are so strong. Come on. Jeez. Oh my goodness. All right, let's try from here again and pull up and I guess pull up from here at the same time. And there we go. Jeez. Okay. We didn't break any clips, did we? Let's see. There's no loose pieces falling out as far as I know. Looks good. All right. So that's what the bottom cover looks like. We're going to set that aside. Let's see if anything. Okay. Nothing loose. So we should be good. All right. Here is the DC jack charge port. It's kind of interesting because the charge port is still that really small one. And then they just have some more beefy wires here going through. This is pretty dusty. So we are going to have to clean that out. Um, LCD LVDS connectors right here. It doesn't look like it would come loose or pop out or anything, but let's go ahead and remove the battery here. So this is a pretty small battery, but most gaming computers do uh, mainly just use the uh, charging adapter, AC adapter. So most likely the battery is just there for backup. All right. And Usually when you're running on battery power, you actually don't get access to the power of the GPU. So keep that in mind. All right, we got these four screws at the top of the battery that we're going to remove. I probably should have done a thumbnail. I don't know if I stopped long enough to get a thumbnail. So let me do that real quick. It's a little crooked. There we go. All right, we'll get a thumbnail there. All right. Then we gotta get these two screws down here out. Okay, be careful with the screws. You don't wanna accidentally drop them in the computer, obviously. All right, there we go. And now we should be able to get the battery up. Okay, there's no things protruding out holding it down. To remove the battery connector, let me actually zoom in here to show you. Um, basically, I just use my fingernails at the wings and I just wiggle this connector, okay? And you can see it's slowly walking its way out and there we go, all right. Now we can go ahead and lift the battery up from the back and then pull this out. And there's the battery. Um, it looks like this connector is not removable. So the new battery should come with that. And the model is WK06XL. All right. So we'll set the battery aside. After disconnecting the battery, you want to open up the laptop and then you want to press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. So I'm holding this now. Um, this makes it a lot safer to work on, especially if you're going to be uh, messing with the screen cable. All right. So make sure to hold this button 15 seconds. You don't need to do this if you're just upgrading the RAM or the SSD. Um, you can actually leave the battery in, but if you're messing with the other stuff, you want to make sure to do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of show what there is here. I'm not gonna be taking everything out because the only issue the customer's having is with the screen. Um, so I'm gonna clean this dust out real quick. The way I do that is I use a toothbrush and I hold this down so I can kind of like brush around like this as it moves a little bit. And then I'm gonna use a powerful electric air blower to get the um, dust out of here. Okay, I don't like using the cans because it blows really cold air and can cause condensation to damage other components. So let me go ahead and do that, all right? And then I'll go over the internal components. Again, I'm not gonna pull them out, but I'll just show you what's going on inside. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let me zoom out a tiny bit more here so you can kind of see everything. All right, and let's go over what we have in here. So we have two slots for RAM, all right? Obviously, just like every other one, you pull the two metal tabs to the side, it pops up, and then you get the stick out. This is PC4 3200 AA RAM. You can use any PC4 3200 AA RAM. Sometimes you can use different speeds, but uh, usually I like to just use the same speed because compatibility, I don't wanna worry about it not working. All right, let me actually zoom in here so you can get a better view. And again, the RAM, two tabs, you just pull it like that. And then when I put it back, I kind of like push it, pinch these two together to make sure it gets a good seating and then click it down. All right, you got two slots here for uh, M.2 SSDs. I'm pretty sure they're both M.2 PCIe NVMe SSDs. Uh, at least they're compatible with that. All right, uh, let's see here. Do we have access to all these things? There's no SSD in here. The SSD is actually over here. Um, we are using a GIS-1 screwdriver now to remove these internal components. After you remove that screw, you can kind of pull this back. You can see they actually put a thermal pad here, even though there's no SSD. Um, you have access, there's the speaker connection here. 
Uh, and let's see where that's actually going. It's hard to see in here. Okay, so you do have this speaker connecting right there. You have the fan connecting actually over here. You have this cable here going over, and I'm pretty sure it's for these two USB ports. All right, uh, wireless card is here underneath the heatsink. I don't know why they cover everything like this. Um, if you need to take the wireless card out or remove the antennas, you do have to undo the whole heatsink, which is crazy. Um, this is the GPU soldered to the motherboard, CPU soldered to the motherboard. If you lift this heatsink off, you do need to redo the thermal paste, at least on the dies. Uh, you don't need to worry usually about the thermal pads, but the heatsink uh, thermal paste, you definitely need to replace that. All right, you got a little cable here, which I'm not sure what it's for, but probably for the power button. Um, yeah, it doesn't say. This is the LCD LVDS connector here, which I'm gonna like just reseat it. I'm gonna disconnect it and reseat it. You got the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. Um, again, one screw, then you can kind of pull this up and pull it back. Um, you got a separate board here for the SD card slot, as well as it looks like, actually no, the headphone jack is part of the motherboard, but the SD card slot is removable. Um, DC jack, charge port connectors here. You can kind of grab the wings here or grab the wires and wiggle to pull it out if you need to replace that. But it is trapped underneath the heatsink um, as well as this metal bracket here. So I have no idea why they designed it that way. I mean, I do know why they designed it that way so you don't work on it. Um, but anyways, touchpad, trackpad connector here and keyboard connector here and then keyboard backlight connector here. And these cables, they come out by flipping these latches up and then you can pull the cable out because this one has these little um, wings or raised parts here. You do have to lift the cable slightly when you pull that out. But anyways, um, other speaker connection is right there, obviously. And let's go ahead now and disconnect the LCD LVDS connector and put it back. I don't think this doesn't look loose at all. So I doubt this is gonna fix the screen issue. Um, especially since they have these raised plastic mounts there. But uh, let's go ahead and pull this out. If we're lucky, maybe there's some slight corrosion that might fix after cleaning it. And it looks like this design, they have one pin that's not used or this area. So yeah, unless that's broken or something. Um, and then they have a model number here. I don't know if that's necessary for anyone, but uh, hopefully you can read it. DA0G3LMBCF0 revision F. I believe that's the motherboard model number. Anyways, we're gonna get this cable back in. It goes in at an angle again, then the wings uh, go past those raised mounts and you can go ahead and push that back down. All right, let's go ahead and put the SSD uh, thing back into place. I'm going to leave the battery disconnected because we do need to check the screen side. I'm kind of curious, a little bit curious if, uh, wait, which way was this thing? Okay, it was over here. Um, I'm a little curious if the, uh, what do you call, the charger, AC adapter, whatever you want to call it. I'm curious if that will be enough to power on the computer without reconnecting the battery because I'm going to try that first so that way I don't have to worry about plugging and unplugging the battery. Um, I'm pretty sure the battery also acts as the BIOS, CMOS, RTC, real-time clock battery, whatever you want to call it. So when we plug this in because we disconnected the battery and held the power button for 15 seconds, um, keep in mind that the BIOS is likely going to be resetting itself and it can take some time for the computer to come back on. All right, so let's get this back in. And then we're gonna plug this back in. All right, so plug this in and let's go ahead and push the power button here. And let's see, I do see the power light coming on, but we're probably not gonna get any display because it's been broken. I probably should press like F10 or something just to make it go into like boot menu or BIOS but I'm pretty sure nothing's gonna come on the screen. So I'm just gonna let it go for a little bit longer, give it like a minute, and then we'll see if anything happens. Yeah, I'm pretty sure nothing's gonna happen.
yeah, nothing's happening. So I'm going to turn this off again. Okay. Okay, it turned off already. I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to hold the power button for another 15 seconds again. All right. And then we're going to check uh, the screen side. Hopefully there's something loose there. I kind of doubt it, but that's what we're hoping. Um, usually these bigger screens tend to like flex here a little bit and it pulls the cable out. So, yeah. Okay, there we go. Let's go ahead and see if we can pop the screen out. So what we're gonna do, whoa, you don't need to see all that. Um, we're gonna try and get under here and we're gonna try and pull this bezel up if we can get under here. Okay, I found a little gap here I can start. And we're basically gonna pull this and rotate it this way, pushing in towards the center. That's usually how the clips hold in. Um, there is adhesive, it feels. So we're gonna have to go very slow here, okay? And actually this corner is already coming up. We're gonna continue slowly peeling and twisting and rotating. As you can see, you can work your way down. I've done this on a lot of computers, so I kind of have a technique to do this. And that's how we just do that. All right, we're gonna go over here and continue doing the same thing, rotating it like that. It's hard to tell what I'm doing from the camera, but uh, that's what I'm doing, okay? Especially since I kind of do it so fast. All right, so there we go. We got the sides on the top out. Uh, hopefully there's nothing special holding this down, but we'll find out. I'm gonna have to respond to some messages real quick. So give me a second and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue getting this out. So the corners tend to be a little bit more tricky, but let's see if it's gonna come out easily or not. All right, also because of the adhesive here, it's gonna be a little tricky as well. I might have to use my thin metal tool to kind of, oh, I guess not, <laughs> it popped out, okay. And it looks like the adhesive isn't even holding there, so that's kind of weird. But, uh, okay, so I guess we'll continue just doing that. Oh, okay, no, the adhesive is holding here. So I don't know how I got lucky with this side. The adhesive isn't really sticking to it. But uh, usually what I have to do is I get this flat tool, and I push the adhesive or this black layer down to the screen as I pull here, all right? I'm not using this tool to kind of pry or anything. I'm just using it to separate the plastic film from the bezel as I kind of separate, as I pull it away. Okay, so I'm gonna continue going down. And you can actually hear the adhesive separating. Okay, again, I'm just using this to keep the black plastic film attached to the screen and not on the bezel, which it annoys me that they use this kind of adhesive here. I don't know why they do that. Okay. And we're just going to continue going down. We're almost done with the whole thing. Okay. All right. And there we go. Hopefully none of the clips broke because it yanks away pretty quick. Um, it looks like all the clips are at the bottom here. And at the top is just the adhesive. So, yeah, you don't really have to worry. It looks like the clips are good. I'll set that aside. All right. So now we have access to the screen here, um, and it looks like it's not just going to plop out. So let's, let's roll the um, plastic black plastic film back down if it got peeled up. You want to kind of make sure it's staying around the edges of the screen. And I don't see how this is going to come out. Normally what there is, is there's these little black tabs of things that we can pull up. But I'm not really seeing that here. Let me see, maybe it's just blended in so well. No, that just feels like plastic. Oh, wow. Is that all we have access to? So there's a tiny bit. What about this side? How are we supposed to get that out? Seriously? Hmm, that's, that's a very bad design. That's a very terrible design. <laughs> okay, so let me zoom in here and see if I can show this. There's a tiny bit of that tab accessible there. 
and a tiny bit of that tab accessible there. So what I'm going to have to use is most likely my needle nose pliers, or not pliers, um, tweezers, and we're going to have to try and get in there to pull it out. And that's going to be pretty tough. Give me a second, I got to respond to more messages. All right, I'm back. Let's see if we can get these tabs out. I'm not sure how else you would get it. I mean, I guess if you take the hinges out completely, you might be able to somehow do it better. I don't know, but uh, yeah, that's as far as the hinge goes. So let's see if we can grab that. Yeah, this is gonna be, I don't know how we're gonna get this. Let's see here. I don't know how we're gonna get this out. We can just barely, barely get a slight hold of it. I don't know. So I gotta grab it, maybe twist it like a spaghetti. And <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't wanna come out. How are we gonna do this? How are we going to do this? I don't know if somebody worked on this before and attempted this, or if this is just the design. If that's how it's designed, HP definitely designed it to screw people over. I mean, I wouldn't doubt it based on the heatsink design where it's covering everything, but anyways, I got a hold of a little bit of it. Let's see if I can pull this. So this kind of adhesive strips, you want to pull as parallel as you can. So I'm trying to pull it straight this way. The problem is now the keyboard's in the way. So I gotta grab it, pull it a little, and then maybe I can use like my thumb here. So while I'm kind of pulling it up, I can use my thumb to kind of slide it straight down and then keep going. And it looks like it's working. I don't think I'm gonna reuse this adhesive tab. We'll see what happens. Um, if I can keep it completely intact, I might make it to where portion of it is sitting up here where the screws are. It's thin enough that it should be okay to sit there. So here you go. We're getting closer to removing all this adhesive and I'm holding it here so that way if it snaps back um, that it won't stick together or stick all to itself and then we can hopefully reuse this adhesive. If you do somehow ruin this adhesive you can just use a small piece of double stick adhesive just to kind of hold it a little bit in place um to where it will take like vibration like a not vibration but strong constant force to peel it away because usually the adhesive is enough that it will prevent like vibrations from messing it up okay so here you can see there's a lot of this adhesive and we're just slowly continuing to pull it out okay so hopefully it extends it seems like it extends all the way up the screen so we're probably going to be okay in regards to only having one tab on each side. Okay, I think it's almost there. And there we go. Okay, make sure to hold on to it so it doesn't slingshot. And here we go. So there's the adhesive strip. Okay, it's just one really long strip of this. And I'm going to stick it somewhere up to keep it from sticking to itself. This piece kind of stuck to itself. So I'm probably going to end up cutting that bit off. Okay, not like we need the whole thing, especially since we stretch it out. But here you can see it has a slight, oops, it has a slight kind of shape to it. So again, I don't know if that's how it came or if somebody tried to take it out and maybe it was up here. Um, if yours is different, let us know. Okay, now we got to get this tiny one out. Again, it's, I don't know who designed it. It's all the way down here. Like if I did it, I would have made it at least into that little hole, but I don't know. All right, we're going to have to roll this like a spaghetti to try and get it. All right, once I can get a little bit of it by hand, then I can go ahead and pull on this. And you want to be, again, very slow and careful. You don't want to tear this because once you tear it, it's going to be stuck under there and you're never going to get it out. All right, so again, I'm just using my thumb to help pull it parallel. And Back. and then we just continue I'm stretching with this one higher and higher so that way it keeps or keeps tension there and you want to be careful because there's this little clip down there that it can get caught on so you don't want to get it caught on there okay all right and I'm just gonna keep stretching as I continue pulling down here with my thumb and my index finger and as you do this the screen does lift up Okay, all right, 
get in there. Okay, it feels like it's coming out. So there we go. And there's that strip. Okay, so again, same thing. Uh, we're going to set this side. This one, oops, I accidentally made it stick together a little bit down here. So try and stretch it to release it. Again, if it doesn't stretch and release, you can always just snip off any excess. You don't really need all this adhesive. They like to overkill. But again, same thing. This one is like that. Okay. So now that we got both strips out, it does seem like the screen is just going to fall out. Be careful not to touch the uh, camera lens. All right. On the webcam or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we're going to zoom out more here, and now we have the screen that we can kind of get behind and pull it forward. You want to be very careful when you let this down. Okay, we're going to slowly drop it there. All right, and now we have access to the back here. If you're wondering, the screen model number is on this sticker here. Let me see if I can flip it over and show it to you. Okay, so the model number is right there. NE173QHM-NY5. So that's the screen model number. If you break your screen or something, you would replace that, okay? Anyways, here is the connection, and we're hoping, let me see if I have my little scrapey tool, yep, okay. So what we're hoping is that this is just loose. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but it does happen sometimes. So we're gonna kind of peel this label up and if that isn't the case we're going to try and order another screen hopefully these screens are available sometimes they aren't so we're going to slowly carefully peel this up okay there we go and this has a metal latch here so i'm very doubtful that it's this so we're going to flip this latch i don't know if you can see that i used my fingernail i got underneath and i just pulled that up then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of wiggle to pull this out okay and we're going to line this back up and we're going to pull that back in. All right. Make sure it's in all the way. Okay. And then we're going to flip that latch back down. And there we go. And I'm going to actually pull the adhesive slightly to kind of get this more tension pulled on it and put that back. All right. What we're going to do now, we're going to see if it powers up again. We're going to flip the screen up into place. And now since I'm finished messing with the cable on both sides, I can actually put the battery back in and not worry about it because we already diagnosed everything we need. There's some like little stuff here. I don't know if that's liquid residue or what is going on. Look at that goop coming out from there. That's the thermal pads. All right, anyways, I don't know what this stuff is. It did brush off. Maybe there's some kind of Liquid damage in here. Hmm. I don't know. I didn't notice anything that looked too weird except for that spot. And this is a little hazy looking, but that has nothing to do with the screen. So I don't see how that would affect it. I don't know if the thermal pads are kind of getting in there and causing some issues, but uh, that looks okay. So yeah, I don't know. That's really strange. All right, we're going to close this and get the battery in. And then we're going to power it back up and see if there's any change. But if you needed to replace the screen, that's what you would do. And then we'd have to also put the um, adhesive strips back in, obviously. But uh, I'll show you guys that once we get all of this back. So we're going to get this connector lined up again. And we're going to kind of pinch this in. Why is it not going in? Come on. Okay, line it all up and pinch that in. I don't know why the battery connector is being a pain, but it is. Okay. Okay, that's not good. Let me double check and make sure it's not bending any of the pins. The connector looks like that. The pins look fine. So I don't know why this isn't sliding in the way it should. Slide in, please. happening why is it so stiff there I don't know what's going on this this battery connector doesn't seem to want to go in <laughs> or is that in all the way I don't know is that in all the way I don't think so is it no I don't think so let me flip it so I can grab it this way maybe it'll be easier for me to pull 
Oh yeah, that was easier. Okay. So I think that's in all the way now. Let's go ahead, maybe put at least a couple screws to hold it so we don't risk it falling down. I'm gonna put one screw over here and the other screw over here. All right. So the bottom case screws all look to be about the same and the bottom battery screws all look to be about the same, but you do wanna keep them in order anyways. All right, we're gonna carefully open this back up. Okay, be careful, the speakers are here. Don't You don't wanna puncture them or anything. All right, let's go ahead and power it on and see if anything changed. And, oh. I didn't notice that before, but the screen is cracked. I think we're going to need a new screen to get this working. So I can actually see this here. You can see that? It rainbowed and then it shut off. So the screen, I think, actually is broken. So I was pretty careful, especially with the side. The side, I didn't feel there was anything that would have caused it to crack like that. So. Yeah, I think probably the laptop, it's did something to disable the screen uh, once they broke it somehow. So what we're going to have to do, I'm going to have to let the customer know we need a new screen. Um, I'm going to put the adhesive in here and then we're going to do that. But as you can see, it's restarting itself several times. That's the um, BIOS resetting. So I'm going to let the customer know they need a new screen. I'll see what they want to do. I'll check what it costs. The prices are obviously always changing, so I go based on the model number. I'll have to see if there's one available, and then we'll see what the customer wants to do. Usually these more powerful gaming laptops with these higher refresh rates, um, I think the screens usually vary anywhere from like $100 to like $300. So um, I'll check that real quick, and I'll be back. Give me a second. All right, so after resetting, sorry, not after like using an external monitor and checking the screen would come on with the Omen thing for a little bit and then that's it. So now the screen is doing the same thing as before where it just stays black. So I think we're going to have to actually replace that whole screen. I mean, obviously we had to replace the whole screen because it was cracked, but um, I think that black screen issue um, it was just like whatever screen it's on, it's stuck. So we're going to have to get in there. I think it's not actually booting into Windows to where it loads the video driver. And because of that, uh, we don't have access for the video. So we're going to lift the battery back out. Okay. Like this, get this back out. And we're going to actually remove the screen. And this time we're actually going to leave it out until we get a replacement screen and install it. So I guess this will be... It'll all be on the same video, but for me, it's going to be split to multiple days. Uh, hopefully, I can get a hold of this screen. I know I said I was checking it, but actually what I was doing was testing if it could boot to the external monitor and see what was happening. Um, anyways, there we go. Drain the power again. We're going to now drop this screen back out. We're going to peel this back up. And I'm going to actually put the uh, adhesive strips back in here. And then we can wait for the screen. All right, so we'll peel this back up. Since you already saw how this went, I'm not even worrying about the camera angles and stuff now, but let's flip that up and take that out. And we're gonna take this old screen out. And if we're putting a new one, we basically put it here and pop that in. So technically you already know what to do, but uh, since I'm not gonna be snapping the bezel and everything back in until I get a replacement screen to do that, um, we're gonna leave that as is. So for now, I'm going to flip this back over this way, and what we're going to do, we're going to get the um, adhesive strips in here, and we're just going to leave them there for um, when we got to work on it in the future. So let's see here, we got this adhesive strip, okay, and what we're going to do, um, actually, let me double check and make sure it'll be okay to do that, because there is this clip here, um, yeah, and before... The adhesive was just hiding under in this little hole, which is very, very difficult to get. Um, and it looks like there is a clip here, so we really can't just put the thing there. Which sucks, right? Because if we put this, you see that? This magnet actually fits in this hole. 
So if we put the adhesive here, this magnet won't be able to sit down there. And so we're stuck with this dumb design where it's very, very difficult to get the adhesive stripped out. Um, but I guess it is what it is. So let's go ahead and put it back in there. And yeah, all right. So this is a pain because it keeps trying to stick on everything. Normally, if you get a new adhesive strip, you would have the backing on it that you can peel it as necessary. But because we have this bare exposed double stick adhesive strip, we just gotta be very careful when we place this. Okay, so I'm gonna get this here back into that little gap. We're gonna try and stick that down. Make sure you have access to that. In this case, since we're not, I'm not gonna put back the screen right away. Uh, I don't have to worry too much about it, but you wanna make sure that if you have to replace it in the future that you have the ability to do so. Okay, and this is kind of being annoying. So this you gotta get lined up at the top here. Okay, and because we already pulled it out, it's a little more, it's a little longer than it used to be. So you kind of have to work with the excess slack. Um, if anything, if you want, you can kind of zigzag it a tiny bit, like working it like into an S shape here. Okay, like this, and this will make it to where you can kind of fit the entire strip in there, back in there. All right, so there you go. That's what we did. Zigzagged it. You don't really need to worry because the whole thing back here is just this metal stuff. Um, on some of them, the metal only goes up here and then the backing here is exposed. So if that's the case, you do have to, you probably just, you can also cut them shorter. You don't have to keep it the same. All right, so we're going to get this other side and do the same thing. All right, again, it just went in that tiny little hole area, which I hate this design. <laughs> so bad. All right. So try and drop that back in there. Try and keep as much of that slack as you can. And again, if you want, you can kind of zigzag it a little bit. Um, yeah. And try and make sure that this adhesive stays flat. You don't want giant bubbles. Um, but the zigzagging is okay. It's not gonna really affect it in any way. Okay, there we go. Just make sure it doesn't have a big bump crease in there. Okay, so there we go. We got the other one. Now we just gotta wait for the screen. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just close this and leave it closed and we'll wait for the screen. So let's go ahead and zoom out here. I'm gonna leave the bottom cover with it for now and we'll worry about this when we get the parts, okay? Oh, it's a little dusty. I should have brushed this off as well. Let's do that real quick. And there we go. So we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna wait for the screen and then we'll, you'll see this all at the same time, but I'm gonna reassemble it. All right, see you guys then. Bye for now. Oh, one other thing. If you're wondering prices of the screen, so I looked up the model NE173QHM-NY5. And here you can see the cheapest price I can find here before tax is about 121. Um, but shipping will take anywhere from two to like four weeks. Um, and then they have these for about 200 something, 200 plus. So price varies a lot, but these ones will take like one to two weeks. So I'm going to have to see what the customer wants to do, but there's so many different options. There's no Amazon Prime. So yeah, we're going to have to wait for that new screen. This, excuse me, this laptop's going to sit unassembled disassembled for that period of time so that's it we'll see we'll get a screen and probably we'll get a screen i'm pretty sure the customer's gonna want to do that because otherwise this laptop's junk but uh yeah all right i'll see you guys later all right so the screen arrived let's go ahead and install it okay they taped it all up like crazy so we're gonna have to cut this thing open all right hopefully Everything will be good here. Okay, and then I cut this. 
Okay. Go ahead and pull this thing up. And you have to cut more. Oop, I have to cut up all the sides and everything. Jeez, so much tape on this thing. I'm gonna have to cut up. Okay, I already did the edges. Okay. I sent some tools here that I'm not gonna need. I'm gonna need a bunch of bubble wrap. I'm gonna have to unroll. It's gonna take a while. You can fast forward over this part if you want. You can fast forward to where I got the screen out. Roll up this bubble wrap. It's a lot of bubble wrap. Oh yeah, and on top of the bubble wrap, they, or I guess underneath the bubble wrap, they put all this plastic thing to hold it to this cardboard. I want to make sure that it matches. I don't know. Oh, they cover it. NE173QHM. Let's see. The old one. What was that again? NE173QHM. They covered the last three, so you can't really see. But NY5, this is N, and then they covered the rest. Um, but the back of it looks the same. So let's see. Give me a second. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead now and unravel this, see if we can find the start of it. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to probably chop it all off. I don't see, okay, I think it's this right here. All right, so this stuff I kind of roll onto this, so that way if I need it, I can reuse it, or if I have to put it back to return it. All right, all this, and continue rolling it. Getting some messages I'm gonna have to respond to. I'm gonna have to pause in a bit, but let's go ahead and continue rolling this stuff up. Okay. All this. Again, you're welcome to fast forward over this. There is a fast forward button. Some people ask why I leave all this stuff in, why I don't edit it out. Anyone that asks that probably doesn't realize how much work editing is. That's another full-time job that doesn't pay anything. And if I hire somebody to do it, it costs me a lot of money. So, yeah. And also it makes my videos a little bit less useful. Because <laughs> there are parts that I put in that other people edit out and then their videos are actually less useful. So, but again, you can just fast forward over this part if you don't really care about this boring stuff. Obviously, this part isn't really useful to anybody other than showing how you can possibly save this plastic material if you wanted to use it for something. Again, it does have uses, so kind of basically recycling, okay? Alright, continue rolling this stuff up. If you ever need to return the screen or something, you might want to have this stuff. Otherwise, you're going to have to put it back the other way. And if you damage it or something, then the seller might blame you for it. Okay, so I like to keep this stuff so I can repackage it exactly the same way they did. And if something breaks, I'll tell them, well, it was your, your same packaging. So, or maybe it arrived packaged like that. Okay. All right. Almost done. One more flip, I think. Yeah, let's wrap this up here. Okay. All right, we've got all that plastic wrap off. Now we have the cardboard piece and the screen itself. That aside. And it's held in with this adhesive. So peel that up. Yeah, they put so much packaging on here. Now we can slide the screen out. All right, we'll also pull that. Okay, now we got this. They put a plastic sheet on top to protect the screen. Now we just gotta connect the new screen to the computer. All right, let's zoom in if you need to see here. Okay, so usually it helps to go slightly to the left or slightly away, depending where this cable is coming out from. If it's coming from the left side, then slightly to the left. 
and then you can kind of line it up, see where it's going and get that in. Before you connect this, make sure that you did disconnect the battery, you didn't plug it in, and then after that, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power from capacitors. Otherwise, sometimes you can fry backlight circuit or your screen or your cable. All right, we're gonna get that lined up. Hopefully you could have seen, I don't know. But basically I use the metal part with my fingers at the bottom of the latch to pull that connector in. And then we'll just latch this down just like that. It clicks into place. And then we pull this adhesive and we just tape this back on. And here you can see the LCD LVDS model number. I don't know if you'll need that, but uh, there you go. It's upside down. Make sure to pause. You can flip over your thing device and look at that. Um, all right, anyways, we got to get the screen seated back in. Hopefully the screen is going to work okay. Um, so to do that, we're going to carefully rotate it this way. And I'm going to keep my hand here because we did put the double stick adhesive down. You don't want to accidentally drop it and make it um, connect. Uh, we do need to peel off the tape here if yours has it wrapped around the back like this. Okay, usually they use a uh, adhesive like plastic on top instead of taping a plastic on it like this. So let's go ahead and peel this layer off. Okay, and again, we're gonna hold this area up and I'm gonna match the top corners here first. Okay, so as close to me as possible, pull that into place and then drop the whole thing down. All right, and we're gonna drop that in. Make sure this is all tucked in properly. And then once you get that all lined up, you can go ahead and push this down. All right. So we got the whole screen lined up. There should be no adhesive on this new screen. Um, if you did get like a pulled view screen, maybe it might have some adhesive. All right, next thing we gotta do, put the battery back in and then we'll plug this in and make sure everything's working. So let's see, what did I do with their Give me a second, I need to get the battery, I'll be back. All right, let's install the battery back in. All right, so just get this all lined back up. Get the cable lined up, okay. All right, slide this into place. Make sure to pinch both in evenly, just like this. Sorry, I know it's zoomed out far. Hopefully you get the idea. And then we'll get these screws back in. been several days since this thing has been left apart because ordering that part took a while. I think it's already been like two weeks or something. Anyways, we'll get these four screws up here back in and then the two at the bottom and then we'll see if we can power it up. We might have to plug it in. Um, sometimes when you remove the battery on these where they use the battery as the BIOS or CMOS uh, battery then you might have to plug it in to turn it on. Let's see. Also, I'm not sure if it's uh, charged since it's been unplugged for so long. All right, let's go ahead and open up the screen. Okay, careful. We'll push the power button. Okay, power is going on. I mean, I see the power light on. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but this light, oh, and there we go. CMOS has been reset, okay? And that's interesting, HP usually doesn't show it like this, and I guess that's why it wasn't booting, um, but it was just showing like some light. Here you go, CMOS battery, oh, I didn't press enter, so it went to sleep, I guess. We'll power it back on again. Okay, or maybe the battery's dead. No, power light's still on. Okay, I'm surprised it just turned itself off. Hopefully it's gonna be okay. Power button light is still on. Why is nothing on the screen? Come on, do your thing. Come on, do something. I hear it making some high pitched sounds here. Oh, and that's weird. Okay, a lot of times what happens when you put a new screen, it's not calibrated properly. Um, I don't know if you can see the mouse cursor there, okay? So there's a mouse cursor here. We're gonna go to where the power button is, if it will let me. I don't know if it's actually gonna click it. Uh, so a lot of times it's not configured right, and then we have to do a restart, but I guess 
it's not working so I'm gonna press tab okay you can see as I press tab it's going to the right spot but the mouse for some reason is not actually on right so I tab to the power button I'll press enter and then I'm gonna go down to the restart and we'll press enter again to restart the computer and hopefully that will reset the um, uh, BIOS and system files to detect the new screen. As you can see, this is showing up properly. And hopefully once it restarts completely, the screen will be, there you go, it's good. All right, this isn't a touch screen, as you can see. All right, not touch screen. I don't think the original was touch screen either, but yeah. All right, so we're gonna restart one more time. Make sure it's good. I guess I didn't have to press enter. It restarted on its own, the BIOS. And then we're just going to get the bezel and everything back in. Uh, let's see. And there we go. Looks good. So we're just going to now shut this down, finish putting back the bezel, and then we will put back the bottom cover and we should be good to go. This was a really long wait just to get the part. Uh, repair wise as you can see it didn't take too long so hopefully you have uh, some better luck with getting parts I don't know if going forward in the future if they'll become more available but currently it took a long time to get this screen okay so bezel um, not really much to it usually I'll start with the top where this uh, camera is so here and then we'll push on the outer edge and basically I'm pushing it down and inwards a little bit Basically, that makes it rotate like how when we took it out to get those clips back into place. And then same thing working down the uh, outside edge. Again, pushing on the outer edge of it to clip in place. If it gets stuck, you don't want to try and force it. Make sure that you're getting the clips to go in the right way. Okay, we're going to go along the top as well. Okay, the bottom corners here are getting stuck a little. So you do want to check how the clips engage. And then basically it goes around this way and this, okay, and this edge is kind of being difficult. So it looks like this has to hook in, so you might have to pull it up a little and then get that in. Let's see if that's going to work. Wow, why are these, the bottom part of this uh, thing is very tricky. Let me see, maybe I need to pull this back out and take a look at how the hinges work. So this part needs to curve around, so make sure you get that in. And I think the rest shouldn't be too bad. I don't know why it's being a pain. Hmm. Okay, I think we have to like pull this up slightly to get this bottom corner in down here to get that in first. And then, can we get it in? Why is it being difficult? This This hook seems to be the part and then also this. Oh, I think this part needs to line up exactly right here to fit. And that's being difficult. There we go. Okay. Click that back in. Click that in. There we go. Once you get that one corner piece in, the rest, I guess, goes in pretty easily. So how did we do that? Got to pull this slightly upwards and line that all up here with this little... There's a little thing down here. Let me see if I can show that in camera. I don't know, it's gonna be tough. I don't have much work area to show this, but you see that in there? Oops, this little piece here. And then there's a little, it's hard to show this in camera, geez. Okay, and then there's that little hole right there. So we're basically trying to get that lined up. And it's not easy, okay? that over and up slightly and then drop it in and come on why is it so difficult to get that in yeah I don't know that this part is being huge pain come on oh you have to kind of pull it over that way more all right, and then it went in, and now we can get the rest clipped in, and there we go. All right, and then get your hand behind the back here. All right, I don't know if it, I'm putting my hand behind here, and then I'm pushing on it so that way I can sandwich it and push 
both sides together at the same time to clip the clips at the bottom into place. All right, and there we go. We got that all clipped in. I'm gonna put this back up this way, and then we're just gonna go across like this to make sure everything is clipped in and the adhesive is pressed down a bit. All right, let's zoom out. Oops, way too much. There we go. Make sure it's all good. Can power it up one more time. Everything looks to be good here. It's making some weird high pitch sound. That's kind of worrying me. Usually that means there's like a leaky capacitor or something. All right, there we go. Now we're gonna push the power and shut it down. And we're just gonna close this up, get the bottom cover back on, and we're good to go. All right, so make sure you get it where these go over the fan. Okay, and we're just gonna go all the way around, pushing it all into place. Oops, let me zoom out a tiny bit more. A tiny bit more. Okay, and we're just gonna click everything down into place. Awesome, just like this. Okay. Good thing the customer didn't really need this right away. All right, and then we got these screws to put back, and these are JS Zero screws. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and um, allows me to continue doing this for a living. Greatly appreciated. And if you can't help out that way, don't worry. You can help me a lot just by watching a few of my other videos and then liking and commenting on them as well. Um, if you don't really care about repairing other computers or learning how to repair computers, um, you could also watch a bunch of my random other videos. I do like reviews of random things. And yeah, you don't even really need to watch. Uh, you can like mute it and just write a comment and then leave and go to the next one. But uh. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's get this last screw in. And then I guess we'll power it on one more time because people like to see it turn on after it's completely reassembled. So let's go ahead and do that. And obviously it's gonna work, but give it a few seconds, there we go. And there we go. All right, that's it. See you all in the next one. Let's drop this, bye.